Well guys, I've got a treat for you today. We've talked previously about uh, C4 FN gas insulated breakers being a new technology and for the first time I'm on a job site where we've installed some. So this is a gas insulated 345,000 volt breaker. They're independently pulled so they're all on their own stands as opposed to being like on one foundation and one stand. Uh, this is a different way to get your spacing for your, your voltage spacing. But Anyway, cool new technology. Um, the breaker essentially functions the same as the SF6 breakers. Uh, there's a rod in the middle and then a rod on the other side is attached to a spring and that spring will either pull that rod away or push it into the rod on the other side. So it just makes and breaks a connection. Uh, a little bit different theory with this though is that when this opens the rod opens or the piston opens it also sprays it's called a puffer the puffer is integrated in that piston and it sprays towards the arc so as the rod opens and breaks that physical connection it also blows this c4 fn gas mixture into that arc to extinguish it faster. So the theory behind that is, if you get the arc put out faster, and your contacts uh, don't wear out as much, and they will last longer. So that is one key difference. Um, this gas is, is actually a mixture. Uh, so SF6 gas is just a 100% SF6. This C4FN is actually a, only a fraction of the actual gas that's inside. So this gas mixture is 85% CO2, about 15% uh, pure O2, and then only like 3.5%-ish of the C4FN gas. So it's only a small fraction, which is kind of crazy, but it's enough to uh, insulate. I think the piston opens up inside and breaks that connection just, just over, just under uh, 8 inches. So it's something like 7.8 inches or so. So that's all you need of a gap to keep the voltage going from this side of the rod that's inside to the other side. So 8 inches is enough to keep this 345 um, KV3 phase from, from jumping from one to the other, which is pretty interesting. Uh, one small difference is the pressure. You didn't need as much pressure in the SF6 breakers on the inside, but these have about 125-ish pounds of pressure inside, so they actually needed to bring quite a few bottles out. If it was SF6, you'd need maybe one and a half bottles. These took like uh, many, many, many bottles to, to fill up and to pressurize. So, oh, about pressure. So yes, it already is pressurized inside to 125 pounds. So how are they able to puff that gas into the arc? Well, there's another smaller pressure vessel inside that has even a higher pressure inside it, enough to, you know, puff that arc out. Once that happens, then there's a compressor of some sort that must be in here that repressurizes that internal smaller uh, pressure vessel to get it ready to puff on the next one. So some of the things are the same, it's the spring and charging mechanisms on the back, those are you know, for the most part the same as the SF6 breaker, same functionality, it just has a spring that will open and close that connection. Uh, the bushings are the same, CTs on the outside are the same. Um, you also have your pressure gauge on the side here, so that's about 135 PSI. Uh, there's two alarms on that gauge. One is a low gas alarm, and then the next one is an auto trip alarm. So it will open these up, it will open the switches up, it will tell everything, every, tell the control house, hey, shut this off, because if you don't shut it off and I run low on gas, it eventually will explode like a bomb. These things will explode. We don't want that. So uh, the SF6 breakers have that as well. So you've got your connections that run from the quick connects over to the main control cabinet. That's where all the cables go and are terminated. And then from there they go into the control house. Um, that's pretty much all the same as, as the other breakers. The gas is apparently eco-friendly. I, I don't exactly know how that is, but that's what they're saying. 
the C4FN gas in the atmosphere will eventually break down. I think it's got a 30 year life before the chemical compounds break down. The SF6 gas, which is not eco-friendly, it's actually harmful for the environment, it lasts for, I think it's between like three and 8,000 years, something like that. It, it's, it's thousands of years, which is crazy. So that does not break down as fast. This gas does break down uh, fast, but even if it is in the atmosphere, apparently it's not harmful. So that is why they're going with these. Um, it's not so much that it's cheaper. I don't, it's more expensive. Uh, but it's the fact that it's eco-friendly is kind of the big selling point right now. This technology has been around a few years in development, but I, again, like this is the first time I've actually seen these in the field. So are there other ones out there? I'm sure, but certainly not many. So it's kind of neat to see these. There are actually 12 of them out here on this project. You have the main, main breaker here, and then each transformer has its own set of these breakers as well. So... Pretty cool technology, just wanted to show you guys. Next we'll go over to the gas. I'll show you the gas canisters and what the compound is. Uh, some, of the, some of the stuff is private, like you can't really talk about it yet, it's proprietary, but the gas mixture is public information, so let's go check that out. So here's some of that C4FN gas mixture. Uh, it seems like a ton of bottles here. A ton of bottles. There are um, 3, 6, 9, 12 breakers here. But holy crap, this is a lot of gas. You can see the mixture here. The, uh, the chemical on top is that C4FN, and then you've got your pure oxygen and then your carbon dioxide, which is mainly carbon dioxide. So pretty interesting gas mixture that apparently is better than SF6. Bunch of it.